everybody. So we're going to talk about lucid dreaming tonight. I'm Brandy Joy, and I have been lucid dreaming since I was about 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old. I started lucid dreaming. I, I didn't know what it was back then at all. I just um, wanted to be awake during my dream state. And that's what lucid dreaming is. It's when you are awake in your dreams. So I learned how to wake myself up by, you know, just wanting to control my dreams. I like to control everything in my life. I'm a bit of a control freak. So I would, in the evening when I was going to sleep, I would just tell myself, I am going to be awake. I am going to wake up during my dream. And I would just keep telling myself that. And I would keep that thought in my head in the evening as I was falling asleep. And if you keep a thought in your head while you're falling asleep, it helps to get you to that point. Now, it takes a little time. You can't usually just do that in one or two or even three evenings. Hi, Kaylin. So it usually takes you um, a couple of weeks. Um, you know, some people can do it within a week. But if you do keep that intent as you're falling asleep, it will happen for you. Um, in fact, um, there's there's different things you can do with lucid dreaming. Uh, you could even plan lucid dreaming with a friend uh, where you astrally visit each other, right? Um, and that's when you will both hold the same intention and the same place and everything. Um, you know, you can just uh, kind of meet there. Uh, some people are able to do that. And, um, you know, it's real freaky when you lucid dream. If you've ever lucid dreamed, uh, you wake up, you're aware that you're dreaming in your dream, and you're like, wow, okay, I'm dreaming right now. This is a dream. And then your, your unconscious, your subconscious, whatever, will start playing tricks on you and will start telling you, you know, you'll have people arguing with you in the dream. So you'll have different things testing you and stuff, and they'll, they'll say things like, this is this isn't a dream. This is reality. If you die, you're going to die and things like that. Or you'll have somebody start chasing you or a, a monster or something start chasing you. And um, that's, that's usually the first stages of when you begin lucid dreaming for most people, not everyone. I'm sure uh, many of us have had all different types of experiences. But typically it, you get tested and, and it's like you're you're fighting with your unconscious you're like, I'm awake. I'm, I'm, I'm in my dream. And then you're saying, no, you can't be, you can't be in your a dream. You're awake. You know, so it's like a struggle. Uh, so if you've, if you've never tried it, I would like to challenge you to try it by the beginning of January 1st. This is the, um, you know, beginning of December. Go for a few weeks if you have to. And every night as you're falling asleep, just tell yourself that you're going to wake up in your dream, that you're going to be conscious that you are in fact dreaming. And that will give you better control over your dreams. And you're, you'll be better able to meet with your spirit guides during your dreams. Now, some people say that if, if a man has like a wet dream, for instance, then there's actually a spirit having sex with this man within the actual bed. You know, and that's why he would have like something like a wet dream. So there's a lot of reasons, like have you ever heard of sleep paralysis? There's a lot of reasons why you, why you might want to get control over your dream state. Um, if you go astral and, and maybe you go out of body, I've, I've done that a few times when I was doing a little bit too much magic, I would get very um, uh, astral and I, I would go out of body, right? You might want to control your dreams that way, to control that, to control entities. Um, in fact, uh, if you've never had sleep paralysis, it's where you're laying in bed and, you know, an entity will hold you down um, and mess with your energy in a way, right? So if you learn how to lucid dream, a lot of times you can get more control over what's going on with your body, what's going on with your mind during the sleep state. So uh, another thing you can do is uh, you could ask a question before you go to sleep and then you'll dream the answer. Your spirit guides typically will step in 
or your unconscious higher self might step in and give you the answer. That's another way to, in a way, lucid dream, especially when you get really good at lucid dreaming. You can really control, you know, what communication is going on with you in the dreams. Hi there. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, I dream of walking with the same people with the same face and height. Um, I'm not I'm not real sure, Yvonne. Um, is that uh, the same people you mean the same people that you dream of all the time or the same like person in the dream is like a clone? I'm not really understanding. Same people, the same face. I'm not sure what you mean by that. What if you don't dream? Everyone dreams. Um, that's a natural process that everyone has to have. Um, but you're not remembering your dreams. Um, I'm not sure why we don't really remember dreams sometimes other than we forget them very quickly and it depends on at what state you wake up. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can train yourself to remember your dreams. If you become more astral and more connected, um, then you will remember your dreams. That's, I, I've always been very active with my dream work. So I remember my dreams in great, great detail, typically. Now, in fact, last night, I didn't remember. I didn't remember my dreams last night. And I thought that was strange. Um, but I've been very tired. So that could be it. But you can train yourself to remember your dreams. In fact, if, if you keep a journal by your bed and you wake up at, say, 3, 4 in the morning and you're just, you wake up, just start writing. Write down everything you can remember that was going on with your brain. If you sleep through the night and you get up, you know, 8, 9 in the morning, whatever it might be, you can do the same thing. Just don't let your feet hit the floor. Go ahead and start writing down your dreams. And as you do this practice, you will become more and more uh, conscious of your dreams. And that's really what lucid dreaming is all about, is being conscious and being awake within the dream state. But even being more conscious outside of the dream state gets you more connected to the dream world. The dream world is a very real place once you become very connected to it. And it will speak to you in very um, just grand symbols and your spirit guides can talk to you within that as well. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Rebecca says, drink some mugwort tea before bed for a few days and it helps with dream recall. Very nice. Thank you very much for that, Rebecca. Yeah, so mugwort tea, I guess, helps out. Yeah, I do know that some herbs are very helpful. I know that when I take certain herbs, I, I have better dream recall as well and more lucid dreaming. Mm, I want to say I I don't think it was mugwort, whorehound. I had whorehound tea one time, and it made me, uh, it made my right brain turn on at a very high rate. I don't really understand why. I've never really looked into it, but... Uh, a fellow uh, friend, uh, which, you know, uh, gave me the whorehound tea, and it did some really cool stuff for me. <laughs> I remember my dreams were pretty crazy and active. Aw, thank you, Thomas. He was just sharing my dream interpretation course. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really neat. I will have to try out the mugwort. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, cool. Miss you, Thomas. Good to see you. I've been wondering how you're doing. I was going to see if you wanted to do uh, maybe a video on crystals for everybody because a lot of people have been asking about healing stones. And I know you know a lot about that. I dream I'm always back in my house. You, you probably astral travel. If you're dreaming of like an old house, typically you're dreaming of um, you're, you're actually visiting the house or you're visiting even in the past. Um, so you'll, you'll go astral into another you know, the astral dimension. Many times we do that. We visit other people. We visit other places. So the the rea reality is a very strange thing. We're all electrical, electromagnetic. You know, uh, we're all energy. And it's 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 a very hard thing to understand and to explain. And so when you do dream work, it's it's very real. You know, it's a, a very real. It becomes a very real part of your life. You know. Um, oh, yeah, you've been, uh, Thomas, you've been lucid dreaming as well since your childhood. Oh, that's so funny. 
that we both, yeah, that's really cool. What if don't dream? Yeah, everybody dreams. I pretty, I'm like, oh, <laughs> very cool. Let's see. Oh, okay, great, Thomas. Yeah, maybe we can do that like next week or something. Um, two childhood homes. Oh, Christine. So Christine says mugwort's good at getting rid of your parasites. So hey, you can get rid of parasites and lucid dream all in the same night. Sounds really interesting to me. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you're having flashbacks three years ago and you're having them now 16 months sober. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure, Jessica. I, I don't I don't know. 16 months sober. Um, you could have energy attachments is the only thing I can think of. Maybe cords, maybe um, you know, any type of leeches or anything within your body from the trauma. And um it could even be spirits, you know, you, you have um, all kinds of energetic debris that can kind of get stuck on you. And that could be what that is. And right now we have Chiron moving, finally starting to move out, out of the tight Saturn uh, aspect. And, and so we've been dealing with a lot of wounds. And um, so this is a time of like wrapping up a lot of issues right now. So it could be that certain aspects in your chart are triggering those shadows that are within you still you know mm -hmm. I'm sure about movies hey crystals african dream moons i have no idea i don't know what that is um okay so yvonne asked me does listening to binaural beats in youtube for lucid astral projection projecting really work um i'm not really sure you know, I am not a fan of binaural beats. In fact, a friend was playing um, some binaural tones or something, and I, I had ringing in my ears and I couldn't stand it. You know, I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like it when it's coming from the external like that. I, I really like to have control, and <laughs> that's why I started lucid dreaming at such a young age because I, I wanted control, right? So. Um, I, I would prefer to do sound work or to just control my own mind, you know, and use magic and things like that on my own rather than allow binaural tones to do that for me. But if you do try it, I would like to hear about your experience. That would be very interesting, but it's just not for me. But I do like to pass on if something works for one person, I, I like to pass it on to other people as well. So it's something that we could even share in our Vibe Tribe community. We could talk a little bit more about ash, lucid dreaming. I do love to extend the conversation into Vibe Tribe from here, you know, because I'm kind of the one doing all the talking. So if you guys ever have anything to share, please do that in, in Vibe Tribe, you know, in your experiences with lucid dreaming. I'd love to hear about some of that because everybody has very different experiences and different abilities that they, um, naturally have right um you're feeling low energy yeah linda yeah i've been very tired um and actually um my my friend he's a he's a psychic as well and he's very very tired as well we've been very tired strange um a lot of stuff you dream about oh so you're prophetic kaylin yeah okay how natural psychics you know as a kid they're psychic and it turns around at seven it turns around teens around hormones kick in yeah because well you have the saturn aspect right so seven years old is the first saturn um square saturn movement and then uh you have you know about 15 years old and you know it's 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 not exactly seven so it's like every like seven and a half years something like that so yeah it's like seven and 15 and then like 23 mm-hmm yeah, you've been feeling depressed, Linda. Yeah, everybody's been going up and down and stuff lately. You know, that supermoon was very intense for a lot of people, and especially we went into retrograde with Mercury at the same time. Neptune turned around. Like, there was a lot of things that happened all at the same time over this weekend, and uh, everybody's kind of feeling the effects of it right now. It's a very interesting week. It's like uh, you feel the transition. It's like a transition right now. It's interesting. 
Um, mugwort, you can probably get mugwort tea on uh, just on Amazon. That's where I get a lot of my stuff now. <laughs> um, or you can get it in your local uh, shops, like your local health food stores, typically. Not all, not all health, health food stores will carry it, but some will. So let's see. Um, so you heard voices, Yvonne. Um, yeah, and that's that's typically spirits, you know. Electromagnetic free electromagnetic frequency is not a human being. Magnetic frequency is a human being. Also, I was thought how to communicate with very high frequency through the mind actually can hypnotize people to answering my questions. It's like communicating with more code, but I can hear each beep, which can be a syllable or a word. That's very, very interesting, Yvonne. It's very interesting. Oh, how do you get rid of succubus? Um, so are you having those experiences uh, with succubus, Kaylin? Yeah, that's great, Thomas. I think you should do the crystal course. I definitely do. You can find mugwort at, yeah, the herb store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're feeling that, Melanie? Yeah, definitely me too. I feel the same thing. Yeah, and Kaylin, absolutely. People who have crossed over visit you in your dreams. And that's another good reason to have control over your dreams and to be able to lucid dream and to be able to connect because the dream world is an astral world. And so it's a good place to connect with people that have passed over. That's where I love to connect with my spirit guides and have conversations with them. You know, I do that uh, when I channel. You know, I channel a lot. And when I channel with my spirit guides, they talk to me, but... It's really fun to actually hang out with them in dreams. You know, it's, it's very realistic in a way. <laughs> so Thomas is no longer going to go back to being immortal. How do you get rid of the succubus? Okay. Um, well, with a succubus, you would definitely want to get a clearing. If you can't clear yourself, um, you can do Rose Cross Ritual. Uh, Rose Cross Ritual is a, uh, a a little bit of a complex ritual. Once you get the hang of it, it's not as complex. Um, but Rose Cross Ritual will uh, cover you like a curtain. So if you have entities bothering you, if you have succubus and things like that bothering you, you can do what's called the Rose Cross Ritual. Look that up. Um, it's something that you're going to have to write down or print out and then... Um, walk through it a few times before you actually do it. And then I, whenever I've done it, I've done it quite a few times, but not enough times to have it memorized. Like I said, it's complex. So I always keep the paper in my hand as I, you know, I keep it there with me and I have it on the altar and I pick it up and I carry it and stuff in order to do the work because Rose Cross is difficult. If anyone would like for me to do um, a ritual for them, you know, I could do that for a love donation. Um, I do Rose Cross, and Rose Cross is very effective for covering you. It, it helps to protect you. But you have to be careful with Rose Cross. Like, if you do have an entity bothering you, it can help tremendously. Um, and it can, I, I banished an entity out of my home that way, a very negative energy. But it can, it will cover you, okay? So if you do Rose Cross and... <laughs> You need to be careful when you're driving down the road and stuff. You don't, you don't, you know, because it makes it so that people don't really pay attention to you because your aura is covered. You know, so people won't see you and stuff. Um, a lot of times they won't notice you. Like you'll get ignored a little bit uh, after Rose Cross, you know, that day. Right. So you just have to be careful with it. And um, it's a good thing to do after you do Rose Cross is to do the lesser banishing ritual. Um, I could, you know, I, I do those rituals and, and they help tremendously like expand your aura and stuff. But when you do a lot of expansion work and you don't have a lot of control over your energy and everything, you will attract things to you. They'll, they're attracted to the light. Um, you know, things are, they can see the light, they're attracted to the light. But if let's say you have a high, high light, high vibration, and then you get like upset about something, they'll really try to feed off of that energy. So you just have to be careful with um, with succubus and uh, any type of entities that are trying to feed off of you. Um, just definitely get a clearing. I know Teresa Crabtree does wonderful clearings. If you'd like to contact her, 
Uh, she does it for donations. It's TeresaCrabtree.com, and that's T H E R E R E S A, Teresa crabtree.com and she's one of my very close friends and she's amazing she's done amazing work for people so if you're having like night terrors uh that's that's entities that's entities that are bothering you and i've seen her clear those from people and their night terrors that they've had their whole life had went away um so she can help with things like that and she's very good with that kind of thing with like succubus and everything but like i said if you want want me to do a, a ritual for you just let me know um I don't do spell work for people, but I do I do rituals like protection things and stuff. Um, I do have a friend that does spell work if you would like a spell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wouldn't want demons to play with me either. <laughs> oh, really, Christine? Smoking black sage with passion flower, also for those that dare, will trigger lucid dreams. It's hard to get, I forget what the technical term for it is. That's scary. I don't know. I don't know if I would want to do that. Huh? Is that something you buy that's made for smoking? Christine, that's very interesting. So um, Jessica says, I've had dreams where I also talk to people that have been close to me that have passed away. It only happened three times in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've had dreams that I was in certain places and end up. Oh, yeah, me too, Jessica. Yeah, that's just prophetic, you know, um, because before you come here, um, you have a lot of different lines that you can go down. And so you scan that, you know, your soul goes through a scanning process. And then when you come here, that's why I always say where it's like we're in this matrix computer program, right? And when you come here, then you start experiencing those different lines, right? So let's say um, because you have free will, you have a lot of different lines you can go down with different people and stuff in your life. And you'll you'll have like deja vu, and that's de deja vu is is that scanning that you're remembering, you're recalling, and so you'll a lot of times dream about what's going to happen because you've already scanned it. You know, you've already seen it. It's already within your unconscious, right? So that's how we can read cards and and things because we can see the probability based on your energy and the energy of other people surrounding you. Now again, we have free will. Things can change but you have probabilities based on your energies and choices people are making because you have the different lines because you have certain learning points and things that you do have to go through um, that your soul wanted to experience, wanted to go through and certain people that you're connected to when you come into this life. But um, you know, you're not necessarily going to meet all of these different people that you could have. And maybe you'll meet, you know, the, the, this person, and then they make a different decision. So then you meet this other person in your life. There's like all these different things when it comes to having like prophetic dreams and everything. You can dream, for instance, that something horrible is going to happen to the world, you know, in six months, but then people make different decisions based on spirits that are helping along, right? And then things change. I've had that happen as well. Mediumship is really relatable with dreams. Absolutely, Thomas, I agree. Yeah. Is that what are they the same, Thomas? Is what, why are they the same, Thomas? Oh, okay. I hear succubus during nighttime whispering from outside my window. I also only heard there was a gay succubus wanting to cling to me. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with succubus. Um, I have had sleep paralysis in a house where we were on a Indian burial ground and we had a, a lot of um, insane things happen in that house. It was very haunted and you could hear like people walking and stuff in the house and then there would be no one there. A lot of different things like that. And um, my room was pretty haunted. I had a cat, my cat at the time would sit in my room and like just stare at the wall and hiss and stuff. And um, it was pretty freaky. And I, I actually had sleep paralysis in that room. And I didn't even know what sleep paralysis was. This was many years ago, early 2000s. We didn't have the internet like we do now at all. It wasn't the information age like it is now. And, um, you know, a lot of really freaky things had happened to me at that time. 
And um, I, I actually, I kept doing tarot and astrology, but I got out of the, a lot of the spiritual metaphysical stuff that I was doing because certain things had happened to me like that, where I became very telepathic. I could read your thoughts before you said them and things like that. Um, yeah, there's some freaky stuff in this, in this reality that we can experience, especially if we take control of it and uh, start doing certain practices like writing dreams down and um, just telling yourself and visualizing before you go to sleep um, or asking your spirit guides a question and going to sleep. Um, you know, and like I said, if you want to meet with someone, you know, in your dream, you can always plan that with somebody. There's something called remote viewing that I'm familiar with as a hypnotist. And remote viewing is where you hypnotize someone and you have them remotely view, um, you know, somewhere else in the world. And they can accurately, if you do it right, they can accurately uh, tell you what someone is doing and what's going on. And it's it's really wild. It's really wild. It's you know, and hypnotizing someone is putting them into a dream state while they're still awake. That's what hypnosis is. A lot of people don't realize that. But you're hypnotizing someone, and you're taking them into a dream state, but they're still awake. Um, if anybody's interested in hypnosis, I do um, past life regressions. So um, if you would like a past life regression, I hypnotize you online here. Uh, you just have to have some headphones for your computer or your phone. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I do that. I'm doing astrology readings for only $79 until the end of the year. And then they're going to finally go back up to 99. I, I dropped them for the entire 2017. And uh, now they're going to be going back up to 100 um, come 2018. So if you do want an astrology reading, I would recommend that you go ahead and get one. And it would be good for uh, finding out about your, your new year that's coming up. So I'm also doing uh, tarot readings as usual, if anybody would like a tarot reading. So, all right. Any other questions or thoughts before we uh, do you do those rituals? Hey, Kaylin, what um, do I do? What rituals do I do? Rose cross? Absolutely. I do lesser banishing. I do a banishing ritual of hexagram. Okay. Anything else, you guys, before we go? Any thoughts about lucid dreaming? Any questions? Any questions about lucid dreams or anything else? I have a dream course, as Thomas was sharing earlier. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I do have a dream course on Udemy, if you'd like that. Um, I, I talk to you about the numerology in dreams, the dream symbols, and what they mean, and how to interpret dreams. I give you different methods. Um, I My background is a degree in psychology. Um, I'm a big fan of Jung and Freud, so. <laughs> okay, I'll give it another second here because um, I know sometimes it takes a minute for comments to come through here. Yeah, yeah, I did LBRP for you, Thomas. I Didn't I actually, didn't I do Rose Cross for you, Thomas? Um, it's kind of like astral projection in a way. Sticking with myself, frustrating. Thank you, Thomas. TeresaCrabtree.com. <laughs> Colorado has so many shadow people. Oh, man. That sucks, Kaylin. Ooh. Shadow people, the dark ones. The black ones. Hmm. That's a little scary. I had, uh, I had a, I've, I've dealt with a couple of those. There's a lot of different types of spirits, actually. Um, and uh, some of them can be a little freaky. Hey, Casey. Hey, my brother's on. How you doing? Aw, thank you, Kaylin. Yeah, you have deja vu every day, Jessica. You're very tapped in. That's very interesting. I have it a lot, but not every day. Do I think demons such as deterred by some people's spirits and demons seem to be afraid of me? I think demons and such are deterred by some people. Yeah, absolutely, Christine. Yeah, because, um, you know, demons and spirits are, they're really just, and they're entities, you know, and sorcerers control them. You know, they can really control them. So, yeah, of course, they would run from some people in a way. 
they feed off others. They uh, they make packs with certain people. Um, you know, they, they do all kinds of different things. And there's different reasons for all the different ones. And there's different types, there's so many types of, you know, angels and demons and entities. <laughs> there's all kinds. You left your body during sleep paralysis? Oh, wow, Christine. Oh, that's scary. Um, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, Kathy, I don't know. That sounds that sounds like uh, something was kind of messing with your energy. Oh, yeah, Kaylin, you have an entity there then. Aw, thank you, Laura Jean. Was drawn to a man as I was young, never knew why. Had a dream about him, and then a year later, had a heart attack in your presence. Oh, my goodness. Kathy, that's that's awful. Was he okay? Being telepathic makes our friends. Yeah, Caitlin, for sure. <laughs> um, frequency you can't see, but seeing aura is vibrations, right? Um, yeah, may, maybe send me a message, Yvonne. That's really long. I don't want to read that on here. It would take me a while. Um, yeah, Francesca, you would like a, a past life uh, reading? Um, they're $150, $149. Um, it's a two-hour session. Um, you know, uh, just uh, contact me on Facebook Messenger, and um, we'll, we can set something up for you. Kathy? Tomorrow sounds like sleep paralysis. Yeah. Um, Kathy, that's a good question about North. I don't really know, actually. Um, that's a really good question. I know feng shui and um, magicians are all about, you know, placing your head in, in a certain direction when you're sleeping and everything. I, I've never really looked into that, but it's an interesting question. You know, if you want to look into that, I would love to hear about what you find on Vibe Tribe. You can always share with us. We can extend this conversation on there. <laughs> Ooh, a hand reaching out to you, Kathy. That's scary. Um, yeah, Justino, you know, actually, uh, a spiritual bath is always very helpful. Do some cleansing before you do uh, anything spiritual. It's, it's always helpful to clear your energy. Uh, a bath with like Epsom salts and lavender. Um, or even just shower with the intent of washing all negativity off of you. That's the way I do it. Um, that is very helpful to cleanse your energy, your aura, and everything. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. Yeah, if you'd like a past life regression, you want to set up any appointments with me or anything, um, you're welcome to message me on Facebook, you guys, Brandy Joy TV. It's the best way to get in contact with me. <laughs> You need your chart done, Kaylin? Yeah, just message me. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kaylin. I'm looking forward to doing past life regression. Going to schedule with you as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you. Peace and love to you, Melanie. Thank you. People think the shadow people in Colorado are the Native Americans that can't forgive. Oh. And the man passed, Kathy. All. Oh. Well, maybe you were, you know. You just knew that was going to happen, and it was just part of your path, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know there's a lot of, um, with the Native Americans, you know, there was a lot of, of uh, horrible things that were done uh, to them, so I could imagine that there was something going on there. <laughs> oh, cool, Thomas, writing curriculum, that's great. Yeah, that's really great. I'm actually working on some things myself as well. And um, I know a lot of people are starting to plan for the new year. So a good way to plan is to get a good reading. In fact, I've been, when I do my business planning, I use my tarot cards the whole time. <laughs> it's funny. That's how I, I read. Uh, I do my, my business plans is through reading tarot. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to do this. Would that be a good idea? <laughs> that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I want to get more feng shui. I think that would be really fun to like feng shui my, my next place I'm living. You do something like that. Oh. Oh, Christine. So you've seen shadow people come from your son's room. You need to really do something about that, Christine. 
Um, I would recommend um, blessing your home, doing a rose cross ritual and using maybe some abramelin oil. Um, use some uh, sage and what's the other one? The uh, the rope. You can use the rope. Um, I can't remember what, what that's called right off the top of my head. But um, you can get it like a bramelin oil and you can, uh, what you do is you take the oil and you place above the doors and the window seals. You'll do the cross and do the circle, the rose cross. And you'll do that to bless each area with your intent of protecting your home after you clear it. Um, so rose cross, again, would be wonderful for that. I might want to have Teresa do a clearing of your home. She does that remotely. So um, you definitely need to do something about that. You don't want those entities in your son's room. That's awful. It's very scary. Yeah. Sweet grass. Thank you, Justina. You are psychic. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining. I know we kind of went off in all kinds of directions tonight. But it's always fun to do that. I love answering your questions. And if you want to extend the conversations on dreams or lucid dreaming or anything else we were talking about, let's do so in Vibe Tribe. So have a wonderful night. Thank you again for joining. I will see you on Monday. And if you'd like a reading, just send me a message here on Facebook at Brandy Joy TV and just let me know what you'd like or ask me any questions. Okay. And um, I will see you all very soon. Have a good weekend. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, that's not good, Christine. You need to do something. Yeah, message me if you want, okay? Bye for now, guys. <laughs>